Hello, this is Brian again. This is gonna this is gonna be my last clip for the day. I'm getting pretty close. I'm actually back at uh, the Hoyt Mountain Cistern. Right over there from one of my very early clips today. I'm back at the junction here. And you remember, you come here, you go up to Mount Lukens, you're gonna go left. Don't go that way. That might act takes you might take you closer. I think it take you closer to Peak 4253, which is up there, and maybe and eventually I think Hoyt Mountain, I believe. So, but if you're going to Mount Lukens from the trailhead, from the Grizzly Flat trailhead, go left at the junction. Just make sure, and you'll see it when you're coming up the hill. It's very early on in your hike. Go up here, see the the old water cistern or whatever that is. As soon as you round the bend, you're going to see a fort going right and a fort going left. Make sure you're going left if you're going trying to go to Mount Lukens way over that way. That I think will might take you uh, near Hoyt Mountain maybe. I think that might be Hoyt Mountain Road. But I'm on my return leg right now. So all you got to do is just go down this, and there'll be another switch back in the canyon down there. I'm going to come down there and I can see my Jeep. It's the one parked closest to that little tree down there. The little big leaf maple tree. So, I said estimating this was probably about 13 miles. Probably about maybe maybe 2400 feet of gain. Because I remember I had a, there was a couple of uphill pitches on the way back. And the pitch was not very steep. It was pretty gentle. So my elevation gain might have been closer to 2300 maybe. So maybe a little bit less than I thought. Because when I was coming back, it was pretty pretty easy going. Oh, a nice side blotch lizard right here on the cliff. Over there. Right in the center there. Between the branches. The side blotch lizard, male side blotch lizard. And this is Uda Stansburiana elegans. That's our subspecies of side blotch lizard. Very handsome, very handsome lizard. But okay, so would I recommend doing this? Was another one. I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted by beautiful lizards. Let's see if I can. Ooh, right there. You get really close. That is beautiful. Another side blotch lizard. There's a lot of those. You're going to see a lot of side blotch lizards on this hike. Alright, so now back to what I was talking about again. So I'll try this a third time. Would I recommend this hike? Well, if you're looking to give yourself a longer distance hike and a more of a challenge in that regard, yes, very much. It's not the shortest way to Mount Lukens, but it's also not the steepest way. The steepest way is supposed to be a roughly eight mile round trip from uh, Big Tahunga Canyon Road. It's uh, called the Stone Canyon Trail. I've heard of that. I've never done it. Uh, it's supposed to be really steep. It's an eight mile round trip hike with roughly about 3,200 feet of elevation gain. So for an eight mile hike, that's really really tough that's a pretty tough one and I've done a hike that was about eight and a half nine miles a few years ago with 3,600 feet elevation gain and that was tough but that one had a lot of ups and downs this one's basically most for the most part up the mountain and down the mountain maybe a little uphill back to your car when you cross the canyon or the river or whatever down there upper big Tahunga Canyon wash I have a little uphill to your car from what I've heard, but, but that's the eight, one of the shortest ways to Mount Lukens. Uh, there's another pretty rigorous one from Duke Majan Wilderness Park. You can you can either go out and back, or you can make a loop, go up one trail, go down another. That one's about 10 miles or so, and about close to 3,000 feet of elevation gain, so it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty decent hike, uh, probably well, 
probably in the lower strenuous category. Uh, I was almost going to do that today, but I wanted to try from a different area. Try to see if I can see if I can make a make an interesting hike out of it and go from a completely different area. Um, pretty sure a lot of the people I've seen on the way up and the relatively few I've seen on the way down, uh, especially further back, probably uh, probably well, they might some of them might have come up this. Some of them might have come up this. Maybe. A lot of cars at the trailhead right now. When I got there, I was the only one until I started climbing up a little ways, and then I saw another car parked there. So that lot can fill up. That trailhead can fill up pretty readily. So that's another reason why I decided to get here early. But yeah, I recommend it because it's another way of another way of making a hike up to Mount Lukens. Uh, interesting way. Lots of uh, breathtaking scenery. Yes, it's a fire road all the way, but you know, you know, you know that's that's what happens. You know. All I can say is that this was definitely a very, very beautiful hike, and I enjoyed it. It's tedious because it's uphill about 90%, 90, about 90, 90 to 95% of the way. It's a couple downhill, at least two small downhill stretches, plus one relatively nice level stretch. And then it's, of course, you know, when you come back, you're going to have to regain those a little bit, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. By far, not even close to as bad as I thought it was going to be. So, totally worth it. And I would, I would recommend it if you're looking for a different way to get to Mount Lukens. Like I said, you just got to pay attention to those two major junctions. So the first one by the little cistern, you're gonna, when you see that cistern behind you, when you're rounding the bend, you're gonna see the trail fork go left. And you're going to go up probably for a few miles, and then you're going to see another trail fork, and you're going to make that really sharp right to get on to N76. So to N79, up to up to 2N76. Like I said, you're going to make that really sharp right at 2N76, and then you just follow that the rest of the way to the top, and that's it. Now here's a plant I've never seen before. Heard about it, read about it. It's a species of called broom rape, B-R-O-O-M-R-A-P-E. So the genus Orobanche, O-R-O-B-A-N-C-H-E. I have never, I've never seen these before. Heard of them, seen pictures of them. Not sure what species it is, but that's, uh, it's called Orobanche. It's a broom, uh, it's called broom rape. It's a non, non, uh, photosynthetic heterotrope. In other words, it takes its nourishment from other plants. So it's parasitic on other plant roots. There's no chlorophyll. There's no photosynthesis. As you can see, there was no, nothing green about that plant. Nothing green about it. So it obtains its uh, nutrition from other plants. The roots of other plants. Well, this is going to basically do it. I just got to curve around another switch back. And I should be back really soon, actually. Uh, thanks for watching my series. This is probably another one of those really long ones. I managed to slip in at least one spotlight on a plants video or spotlight on shrubs video. So be on the lookout for that. I'm getting uh, getting uploaded around the time this set gets uploaded. And be and. Just be aware, this is going to be another long video set. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you on my next adventure, hopefully next week. I'll see 
if I can go for four weeks in a row, and that'll be March 26th, it'll be next Saturday, and then uh, around the be very beginning of April, I have five days off, so I am most likely going to be linking up with my friend Brett. I'm going to try to include more of him in my videos, because usually when we're together, he and I are... You know, he's off looking at one thing, and I'm off looking at another thing, but I want to try to include more of him, because he's also a native plant enthusiast, especially with the, the trees, but he's a, very much a native plant enthusiast. He's a plant enthusiast, period, like me. But, uh, whereas I focus on the documentation, the the finding, and the... 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 Uh, you know, appreciating them. He's also like that, but he's uh, more into growing the plants. Uh, he likes to grow our natives. So do I, of course. You've seen some of my native plant collections. Uh, but he's also very passionate, very passionate about growing our plants. And I've always, you know, I've always admired that about him. And this will wrap up this video and. I'll see you next week, hopefully, if not the beginning of April. Some videos. Maybe in the Scoties, maybe the Southern Sierras, we'll see. Thanks for watching.